Yeah. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking this journey with me. I really appreciate uh, you watching my videos. Um, and if you're new to my channel, uh, please subscribe, like the video, and click on that notification bell so that you can know when I do post new videos. Uh, just giving you an update today because today is a very uh, special day, uh, emotional day. Um, all of the above days that you can think of. But 12 months ago today, I was diagnosed with stage four esophageal cancer. So I'm glad to know, we're well, glad to say, I'm glad to inform everyone that uh, I'm still here. <laughs> By the grace of God, prayers from my family and friends, uh, the man-made medicines uh, that I've been taking, the support system that I have, all that has gotten to this point. Um, Twelve months ago today, I was told that I had six months to live, um, which is a scary thought, you know, after that I didn't really hear anything the doctor told me like I said it's been 12 months um, just reflecting on this past year uh, it's been been quite a journey and I appreciate those who have watched uh, who consistently watch and who want to know more information uh, I do try to answer any questions that y'all leave in the comments um, so if you do have any go ahead and leave some down or if you just want information you know go ahead and ask the question I, I try to answer everything um, in a timely fashion so let's get into it um, 12 months ago I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer um, I originally went to get checked out because I had issues swallowing uh, my food or even beverages um, it started off at first just feeling like food would get stuck in my throat then it progressed to, you know, it getting stuck and then me kind of, I wouldn't say vomit, basically spitting it back up. Like, it would just be whatever I ate at that particular time, it, it would get stuck and you know, kind of, sometimes it would be hard to breathe and then I would, it would come up and then I would be fine after that. Um, and then it progressed and kind of got worse after that. Um, it went from small bites to basically I, as soon as I ate something or drank something even liquid wouldn't go down it would come right back up um, so that's kind of you know when I went to go see the doctor uh, I'm, I, I've never been a person that really vomit a lot I was never one who gets hit to the stomach and you know come up you know that should have been a red flag there the fact that I was throwing up but it just felt like it would get stuck so it wasn't like I was sick or anything. It just felt like I was, it was getting stuck and it would come up. And then, you know, I'd be fine after I can eat my food like nothing was wrong. So I guess that's kind of why I just brushed it off. Um, apparently, I was having acid reflux, but I didn't have any symptoms. I was, like, asymptomatic of reflux. So I didn't, I didn't have, like, the burning sensation or, or the, like, the, I guess, indigestion or gas, whatever that, that comes with heartburn. I didn't have that problem, um, but apparently my stomach acids were coming up and eroding my esophagus. Um, finally went to the doctor, they couldn't figure nothing out, they didn't want to test for cancer because I was too young to even have cancer, um, so they took my, and my blood work came back fine, so, you know, they just kept looking for different things, they gave me like, um, Nexium for indigestion, and I, I took it sparingly. Uh, simply because I didn't have the symptoms, like I said. So I didn't feel the need to take the next I was losing weight, uh, which should have been a red flag, but because I was trying to lose weight, I was on a diet, I was on a keto diet, uh, and the weight loss wasn't a red flag either because I was trying to, and I was like killing this weight loss. The weight was just falling off my body. And I'm like, man, this is like the best diet ever. <laughs> I even got like four or five of my coworkers uh, involved in uh, keto, and it works for them. Excuse me. And, uh, but they weren't seeing the results I was getting because no one knew that I had cancer helping me lose weight. Um, 
So that wasn't a red flag because I was 300 pounds in August of 2018. Uh, my first chemo treatment was April 15th of 2019 and I was 167 pounds. So from August 2018 to April 2019, I lost 100, what, 33 pounds? So yeah, that was quite a drop, significant drop. Once I was diagnosed, of course, I tried to, I went straight to the internet, try to find information, and um, there was no information on esophageal cancer. Um, it's a relatively new cancer here in the United States. It's, it's uh, been growing over the past, what, 20, 30 years or something like that. And uh, now it's kind of one of the leading causes of death in cancer because there's no case studies on it because it's not, it wasn't something that I guess as Americans we get. Uh, so if you know anybody who suffers from chronic indigestion or heartburn, uh, that's, that's like a, a risk factor. That pretty much, if that goes untreated, you will get cancer kind of thing. Um, it's almost guaranteed that that's gonna lead, that's gonna be the next step if not treated. So if you know anyone or if you may suffer from acid reflux, please, please go talk to your doctor about it. Um, ask for an endoscopy um, because they're not going to screen, especially if you're a young person. Uh, and I was 39 when I got diagnosed. Um, well, 38. My 39th birthday, I was getting a port put in uh, on, on my birthday. Um, so, um, and that was, to me, that's not really young, but I guess the medical profession, I was still too young to even think about any kind of type of cancers. Um, so please ask for the endoscopy. My first chemo treatment was April 15th. Um, and the goal was to try to start this um, documentation to get information out there to those who might be struggling or who may have just been diagnosed with esophageal cancer and wanted some information. Uh, because like I said, there was nothing on the internet. Um, you know, one or two videos of people who had it and um, it just wasn't a lot of information. Um, this battle is, is, is difficult. Um, I take chemo treatments every two weeks. So started April 15th every two weeks all the way until December. And uh, I'll tell you why I stopped in December later on, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so I started off taking um, oxaliplatin, docetaxel, and 5-FU. The first treatment, man, it was terrible. I uh, came home um, from the doctor. I had a pump that was connected to me um, that I, I get. Uh, I have to keep it on for 24 hours because it continues pump, it pumps the 5-FU into me. Uh, for a 24-hour period, it has to go in that that slow. So from the time that I disconnect from my infusion from the oxaliplatin and the docetaxel, uh, 24 hours after that is when I go back to the doctor to give him back the pump. Uh, when I came home from the pump, I was so fatigued, so tired. Um, it was a crazy feeling. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It was like... I was there, but not there. Like, I was kind of floating. Um, I slept the, basically the whole day. Um, a couple days later, I had, like, the worst stomach pain in my entire life. Uh, the way my stomach was feeling, that was the worst pain I have ever felt by far. Um, by far. I, I can't even put it into words. Uh, I was in so much pain. Uh, that I had to go to the emergency room. I tried to deal with it. Uh, I looked up, you know, symptoms. Had my wife look up symptoms, uh, what happened. But like I said, there's not much information. Uh, so a lot of information was saying that, yeah, that's part of the, the process. Um, you, you're going to have some pain. That's just a side effect. So the first two days I was dealing with that, I, was, I just kind of was like, all right, well, that's this is a side effect. Um, I was trying to tough it out. I was pretty much sleep most of the time because it was so painful I just I just passed out um, by day three like I didn't like literally I didn't make it to day three it was like two in the morning uh, on day two going into day three and I'm like I, I can't do this for the next two years or so this type of pain like 
I can't, I can't do it. Went to the emergency room. Uh, they doped me up with morphine and gave me some hydrocodone to take home with me. And actually, I was fine after that. Uh, the next treatments after that, I didn't have that stomach pain. So I don't know if it was, if it killed whatever nodules that they saw in my stomach, in my stomach lining, and that's what the pain was or what, but um, didn't have that issue anymore after that first treatment. Um, suffered from neuropathy, um, suffered from roid rage, because I get a steroid uh, infused uh, before my, my chemo to help my body I guess tolerate it um, but because uh, the roid rage was so bad I had to talk to my doctor to have her adjust it to kind of lower the dosage uh, I was snapping I kind of still snap a little bit but I was snapping at everybody everything was getting on my nerves I, you know, I was just annoyed I was a grump box pretty much um, suffered from chemo brain kind of forget some things um, did that for a little bit um, they always ask me if I've fallen, uh, and I couldn't understand why. There's probably some other side effects that I'm missing that I'll probably try to update in a later video. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'll, I'll try to keep it going. So, um, my insurance at my job was basically covering everything. Once I had my uh, uh, endoscopy done, I had a, uh, um, what do you call it? ultrasound I had an ultrasound done also um, once I had those two things done in my first chemo treatment that pretty much sucked up all my out-of-pocket expenses my deductible so I met everything so after that my insurance was paying 100% so I just go in and come out whenever I needed a scan uh, the second scan they did I didn't have to pay anything because I met everything already um, early um, but I knew I wasn't going back to work. Um, and I worked at a, a junior high. But my insurance covered everything. Uh, I held out hope a little bit that I was gonna go back to work uh, because that was, that, that was my passion. And I, that was my purpose as well. I probably held out hope a little bit too long. So by the third or fourth month, I realized that I was not gonna be able to do it. I was basically gonna be out two weeks every month. My wife kept telling me, like, you know, you should let them know uh, that you're not gonna be back, and I was just holding out hope. The, the insurance goes from September to September. Um, September 1st is, like, I guess, the open enrollment, uh, and you have it till the end of the month before you get dropped. Um, so when I went and explained to them that I wasn't coming back, uh, I think I had a, like a couple of days or so where I was thinking about, you know, am I going to get Cobra? What kind of insurance am I going to do? What kind of insurance does my doctor take uh, that will allow me to continue this treatment? Um, and that's another reason why I kind of held on to hope because I knew that I needed insurance to pay for this. So I think my wife looked into Medicaid and uh, we went that route and got approved for Medicaid. In July it was. I went and told the doctor, uh, business department, I was like, I have new insurance. Can you go ahead and put this on there and take me off of my other insurance? Just switch it to Medicaid. Uh, they took the information out and said, yeah, we'll get it taken care of. Um, I let them know that it's going to expire because I'm not going back to work. They're like, okay, well, we'll once, it, once that happens, we'll get it taken care of. Uh, so didn't, Medicaid didn't get billed for July. They didn't get billed in August. So they contacted me in August saying, hey, you know, we haven't been billed. If you don't get billed, then we're gonna drop it because apparently you don't need it. I'm like, no, 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 I, I need it. Um, let me go talk to them because my insurance is gonna expire. So I went back and said, hey, can you go ahead and switch from my previous employer insurance to the Medicaid so that y'all can start billing Medicaid or else they're gonna drop me. Um, they're like, yeah, that's fine. You know, we'll get it taken care of. They kept saying that. So I'm like, all right, cool. So here comes September. Medicaid calls, contacts me and says, hey, you know, we're going to drop you because you haven't been billed, so you don't need it. You know, thank you, goodbye. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, what? And then my insurance expired at the end of December, uh, September, so now I'm, like, not covered. So they, the first treatment I had in November, uh, they were like, yeah, you know, you got to pay, like, 
ten thousand dollars and stuff because you don't have insurance. I'm like, well, you have to bill me because um, I'm not. I don't have ten thousand dollars in my wallet. I had Medicaid. I did what I was supposed to do. It's just y'all didn't switch it, and that's when they let me know that there was a law saying that they couldn't switch an active insurance. I don't know if it's state law, federal law, something, but they were saying, hey, you, you basically can't switch an active insurance um, to another insurance. Um, which is dumb to me. Uh, so from December, I mean from November to December, <coughs> excuse me, it was a constant, hey, are you gonna pay us? You know, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna pay you because I don't have 20, 30, 40,000 dollars, however much it takes for this chemo treatment, uh, plus the lab works um, to pay you. Um, I don't feel like it was my fault. I feel like I did what I was supposed to do. I knew this was gonna happen. I went ahead of time to get this corrected and I mean I understand that it's a law that y'all can't switch insurance I, I don't know what to do I don't know what to tell y'all I shouldn't have to pay the consequences with my life uh, because y'all because of this law well during that time I was trying to get with Medicaid and they were it was like no they were like you make too much money I'm like I haven't made any money since April when I was working uh, and it was just a big long story I mean, long argument. Um, so December, January, what is it? What's on? One minute. No. You don't know? Is the TV on? Yeah. Do you need to turn it off? Or you want to sleep with the TV on? Let me turn it off or you want to watch something to go to sleep? Alright. Wanna put it back on Jake? go find some insurance um had to find insurance that was affordable first of all because again i'm not working um i am getting social security disability but now i have to pay for insurance out of pocket so it's like i get money and now it goes out so but as long as i get better uh, it's not that big a deal to me um we'll work that out we'll cross that bridge when it gets here um Had to figure out some insurance what my doctor took you know what what was out there what was affordable so finally by february uh i was able to get insurance march 16th was my first treatment of this year um so i've, I've had three treatments since then and right now uh i've got back on all three drugs um and i say got back on because uh probably about my seventh or eighth round maybe even ninth round, they switched me from oxaloplatin to irinotecan. So I was on uh, docetaxel, irinotecan, and 5 FU. Um, did that for about two or three rounds. Neuropathy didn't really get better, um, so they took me off of the docetaxel. So I was just on the irinotecan and the 5 FU. Uh, and I was on that all the way until December. Um, I had a break in December that I requested before the insurance thing happened um, because I wanted to go spend Christmas with my sister in New Jersey. Um, so my sister and my mom were in New Jersey and my sister's family, you know, we went, stayed with them. So I had a break. When I came back, I was scheduled for a treatment. I got back on a Friday, I was scheduled for treatment that following Monday. So I had a couple days to kind of recoup and get ready for, for uh, treatment. That's when they denied me because of I didn't have any insurance. Now, here I am one year later. Um, praising God because I'm here one year later when I was told I only had six months to live. Um, that's my, my journey so far. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please leave questions in the comments. Like I said, I'll try to get back to them at least 
one to two days I, when I get them. And thank you if you've been with me on this journey since day one. I'll try to do more um, videos, more update videos. Uh, I wanted to. Hey guys, I apologize about that. Uh, my battery pack died. I didn't realize my battery was so low. But uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for those who have watched all my videos and joined me on this journey. Um, and thank you for those who are watching for the first time. I really appreciate everyone's support. I uh, will continue to make these videos and I will make more um, as the days come along. All right. Thank you for watching again. Y'all have a good day. Until next time. Let's go and live the good life. The good life. The good life.